Esta es nuestra democracia actual. Nos han acostumbrado a participar una vez cada cuatro años, elegir a unos representantes y desvincularnos de la vida política hasta las próximas elecciones. Y por si eso fuera poco, asistimos con naturalidad al incumplimiento de los programas electorales. Las iniciativas ciudadanas tampoco prosperan porque nuestros representantes políticos quieren mantener el monopolio en la toma de decisiones. Nuestras autoridades promueven formas de participación ciudadana superficiales que pueden controlar y no afectan a los temas que verdaderamente importan. ¿Podemos cambiar esta situación? ¿Podemos crear una verdadera democracia participativa? ¿Sería posible aprovechar el potencial de Internet y de las redes sociales con este fin? Para conectar en nuestros barrios y ciudades a los vecinos unos con otros. Uniendo a aquellas personas que comparten intereses, inquietudes y problemas para que al articular sus demandas con las acciones de las organizaciones y los movimientos sociales puedan ejercer una influencia poderosa sobre las instituciones públicas, que se traduzca en acciones y políticas públicas que promuevan realmente el interés general y que resuelvan los problemas de los ciudadanos. Con ese objetivo estamos creando Citizens, una plataforma de software libre que facilite y potencie ese proceso de interconexión de la ciudadanía. Citizens permite hacer algo muy sencillo, pero muy importante. Mantenernos informados de las convocatorias cívicas que ocurren a nuestro alrededor y están relacionados con los temas que nos importan. Es decir, Citizens te permite saber quién está haciendo qué, dónde y cuándo y también cómo podrías tú apoyar las iniciativas. Así, por ejemplo, buscando Sostenible, se encuentran las convocatorias en tu barrio para las próximas semanas relacionadas con esta palabra clave. Tanto las organizadas por colectivos ciudadanos y entidades cívicas como las de las administraciones públicas. Para cada evento puedes ver sus niveles de actividad, difusión e interés y haciendo clic en la ficha podrías ver informaciones detalladas sobre sus objetivos, su agenda y los colectivos que participan en él. Si alguno de los eventos te interesa, puedes seguirlo para recibir automáticamente alertas sobre él o también compartirlo en las redes sociales con tus amigos y tus contactos. La búsqueda también te indica que colectivos, organizaciones, instituciones e incluso personas concretas están especialmente relacionados con el tema que te interesa. Es más, cuando creas un perfil en el sistema, puedes definir tus intereses y de esta forma Citizens te avisa proactivamente cada vez que acontece algo relacionado con ellos. Además, Citizens guarda registro de todos los eventos cívicos que acontecen en la ciudad. No solo es posible ver lo que va a pasar, sino repasar la historia de lo que ocurrió anteriormente. Algo muy importante cuando te incorporas a una iniciativa que ya lleva meses desarrollándose o cuando no puedes acudir a un evento, pero te interesa informarte de su trayectoria y resultados. Citizens provee de una agenda cívica abierta y apartidista que cualquiera puede utilizar. Son los propios ciudadanos y organizaciones quienes crean las informaciones para dar a conocer sus actividades y convocar a los interesados. Estamos trabajando en la programación de la plataforma Citizens y esperamos empezar a usarla pronto con vuestra ayuda. Tú puedes ayudarnos, contribuyendo con tus habilidades al proyecto, haciéndonos una microdonación o promoviendo el uso de Citizens en tu ciudad. En resumen, nuestras democracias no funcionan como deberían. Queremos arreglarlas empezando desde lo local, creando herramientas que nos conecten con los demás. Tú puedes ser parte de este cambio. ¿Quieres ser protagonista? Pasa a la acción. Conéctate. Construye ciudades sensibles. Citizens. Todos contamos. Tú también.
My name is Jón Gnar and I'm the mayor of Reykjavík and the protector of the Balkan e-democracy startup project. Uh, since 2010, we've been uh, running a website called uh, Better Reykjavík. And uh, over uh, 70,000 people have participated on this website. And as the inhabitants of Reykjavík are only 120,000, that's a clear uh, world record in e-democracy. And people of all ages can participate in Better Reykjavík. Meet Colburn Sara. Colburn Sara had an idea. Her idea to take more field trips was supported by her community through Better Reykjavik. The, the non-profit Citizens Foundation, which is our partner in, in, in Better Reykjavik, is producing a, a Balkan uh, uh, e-democracy startup project. This will replicate the success of Better Reykjavik in 12 projects in seven Balkan countries. Albania, Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Croatia. We want to increase youth participation in democracy. Uh, this is a project that has the potential to change the perception of democracy in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Our project aims to inform the North Mitrovica citizens about the benefits of the democracy and its core value. We need your support. Even small amounts will help improve democracy in the Balkans. And, and preserving democracy is a constant battle between good and evil. We meet again, Will. Did you know the word politics comes from ancient Greek polis, the city-state, in which the first kind of democracy was carried out by its citizens? They, like us today, identify problems and discuss them. We do it on the streets and in bars, and sometimes begrudgingly at Thanksgiving dinners. In Athens, the citizens all came together on a designated hill outside of the city to discuss current issues and create policy solutions. Every free man, literally only free men by the way, had a say and a vote to decide on a policy for each issue. Thus, word on the street was transformed into politics. This input from citizens into policymaking is what we call direct democracy. Modern nation states, like Germany in our example here, do not share one common public space where all citizens could meet. Reaching an understanding about common issues merely by talking them over is unfeasible for the amount of people that would have to be included in our modern societies. The problems of our time are very much different from those of ancient Greece in three ways. Because of the diversity among our citizens, mitigating their issues is far more complex. Moreover, to be a citizen today is no longer a vocation. Unlike the men of Athens, we usually have to work to earn a living and do not have the time to spend all of a day pondering and discussing political issues. That may be part of the reason why many people today feel they do not have the adequate expert knowledge about those issues to contribute to the political sphere. What most modern democracies do instead, then, is have designated representatives from the populace devote their full time to be professional politicians. They carry out the public discussion of issues in our place. Mass media channels their discussions back to our societies, but only the politicians get to decide on those issues in the designated political arena. We, the public, 
do get the chance to vote for a representative of one worldview or political persuasion in certain intervals, usually every few years. In most of our democratic systems, the representatives are being organized through party affiliation. The majorities that come about in the elections then get to decide on current issues and turn them into policies for as long as they are elected. We regular citizens do not get to have an input on policy making during that time. This system of politics is what we call indirect democracy. Recently, there are people who are no longer satisfied with such a rigid system that all but eliminates the input of citizens from policy making. They argue that any citizen at any time should have the chance to make their voice heard in the policy making process, even if they do not want to become full time politicians. Full time politicians and parties may still be useful, but every citizen should be given a vote for every issue on the table. In this system, people may choose to delegate their vote to another person whom they trust to make an informed decision in their place. They in turn may delegate those collected votes further on to yet somebody else a politician who stands for a certain worldview, perhaps. They may also choose to elect professional politicians themselves. And now, people also get to vote on policies directly. Now, there are several ways in which the input from people may be transformed into policy. Moreover, whenever there is a particular issue in which a person has such a strong opinion they do not want to trust anyone else to make the decision for them, they can take back their vote from the person they delegated it to and vote on the policy themselves. It is this fluid alternation between direct democracy and indirect democracy that gives name to the proposed system of liquid democracy. Modern technology has made a public space that all citizens can inhabit possible. Instead of on a hill outside the city, we may meet in cyberspace. We can discuss events online to determine issues that warrant policy making. Collaboration tools, of which Wikipedia is but one small example, can facilitate ways in which many people can have an input on policies. And computers and modern cryptography can tally votes and the delegation of votes so we can decide on those policies. This way, all citizens could partake in policy making once again, much like on the Agora, the hill outside of Athens. My name is Fanny Aitamurpa. I'm a visiting researcher at the Programme on Liberation Technology at Stanford University. And I'm Jonas Pekkanen, uh, the founder of Open Ministry, a civil society organization aiming to crowdsource legislation. And we will present our projects about digital democracy at the World Democracy Forum at Strasbourg, France in November this year. And on this video, we will give you a short snapshot of both of our projects, which, will, uh, which are enhancing uh, citizen participation in lawmaking. First of all, Open Ministry is a non-profit, non-partisan organization that provides a platform uh, for crowdsourcing ideas and a support organization for turning those ideas into actual law proposals with the help of volunteer lawyers. Uh, we also help in building the campaigns uh, needed uh, to get 50,000 supporters. The background is the Constitutional Amendment and the Citizens' Initiative Act in Finland that came into force on March 1st, uh, 2012. That abolished the monopoly of the politicians to set their own agenda uh, and, and uh, now citizens can uh, actually force the parliament to handle any law proposal that gets 50,000 supporters or 1.2% of the voting population behind it. Since last year we've helped a number of initiatives. The first one, the banning of animals for their furs, was handled uh, and voted down by the parliament in June 2013. And the next one, uh, which is uh, for allowing same-sex marriages, will be uh, handed over to the parliament later in 2013. Uh, in addition, we're, we're working on, on a number of other proposals, uh, including the changing of copyright laws, allowing of uh, euthanasia, the, uh, the uh, ending of conscription and the separating of the church and state 
uh, and even a proposal that would give political asylum to whistleblowers uh, like uh, Edward Snowden. And uh, in my project uh, we have crowdsourced legislation in a slightly different way. Um, in this project the Minister of Environment in Finland invited citizens uh, earlier this year, uh, 2013, to participate in the reform of the law for off-road traffic. Off-road traffic means uh, basically riding your snowmobile or ATV in the nature, so basically beyond the established roads. So now the Ministry of Environment wanted to ask the citizens uh, whether they would have ideas how to reform the law in the best uh, possible manner. In that process we got about uh, 500 ideas and we are currently analyzing those ideas and then in the fall 2013 the Ministry will consider how to use those ideas and solutions in the law. So please, uh, if you want to learn more, uh, contact us or come to hear our presentation at the uh, World Democracy Forum in Strasbourg in November. Thank you. Thanks. I guess I'm fine. In today's digital age, people are expressing their thoughts on the big issues in a wider variety of ways than ever before. However, those who need to listen to people's opinions often struggle to navigate the social media maze. Now you can find all those opinions in one place with Our Space, a specially developed platform for bridging the debate gap between citizens and those with the power to make decisions. Our Space is a flexible, open source tool allowing public institutions, youth associations, NGOs, media bodies, think tanks, and research centers to easily engage with their target audiences and create a sense of belonging. Our Space is a mature and fully tested tool, facilitating collective decision making processes. It allows your organization and audience to discuss specific issues, deliberate about solutions, and reach effective outcomes. Featuring multi-language support and integrated translation tools, everyone can have their say and be understood. Our space was tested on a panel of 4,000 young users, NGOs and decision makers in the United Kingdom, Greece, Austria and the Czech Republic. It's available on the web, on Android and on Facebook, facilitating discussion online and on the go. Use Our Space today to engage, discuss and debate. Public opinion matters, and as a policy influencer, it's important you understand what people think about today's big issues. But opinions aren't in short supply these days, and sorting the chatter into data you can use is no easy task. What you need is Puzzled by Policy, a platform that brings citizens and decision influencers together to make better policies. Puzzled by Policy is a fantastic resource for any organisation working in the public policy arena. Users take a short quiz to find out where they stand on today's big issues and can engage in discussions about specific policy topics via Udebate. Their opinions are collated into valuable qualitative and quantitative data. The data can be sorted by nationality, age, gender and more, providing a clear snapshot of public opinion in a structured visual form. Thousands of people are already using Puzzled by Policy across the EU, with the number growing all the time. Puzzled by Policy bridges the gap between people and the policies that affect their lives. Citizens are engaged and informed, and you know what they think, helping to shape effective and evidence-backed policy making. Download Puzzled by Policy today to click, consult and communicate. In a country with direct democracy, people can participate directly in politics. Everyone can help decide how the state, the cantons, 
and the communities are organized. One of the oldest forms of direct democracy is the so-called Landsgemeinde. Appenzell in Rhodes and Glarus are the two last cantons where residents entitled to vote gather every spring in the open air to decide on laws and expenditure. In the whole of Switzerland, residents vote on average four times a year on various issues concerning their community, their canton, or the whole of the country. For example, they can vote on whether to have a new school built in the village, on how the canton should produce its electricity, or on the state old age pension plan. In addition, every four years the people elect the 246 members of the national parliament, which consists of two chambers. The House of Representatives, representing the people, and the Senate representing the cantons. This system gives less populated cantons more political weight. Parliament makes laws and elects the national government, which consists of seven members of various parties. People can overturn laws made by the parliament by launching a referendum. If they manage to collect 50,000 signatures within 100 days, the bill has to be voted on by the public. The People's Initiative enables citizens to make alterations to the Swiss Constitution. To hold a public vote on an initiative, 100,000 signatures have to be collected within 18 months. What are the pros and cons of this system? The main advantage is that it gives the Swiss citizens a lot of power in decision making. Every uh, so often, several times a year, they can take decisions not just on who runs the country, but also on concrete proposals. One of the key disadvantages is probably that it makes decision making slower, and there are a lot of act political actors involved. There's the parliament, there's the administration, the government, interest groups, and, uh, and at the end, the people. And often it's unclear at the end who has been responsible. Some criticize the system for allowing people to accept initiatives that might contradict constitutional law or international accords. The following two examples of recent votes polarized people in Switzerland and abroad. In November 2009, a people's initiative to ban minarets in Switzerland was accepted by 58% of voters, despite Parliament and the government's clear recommendation that it be rejected. One year later, a people's initiative on the deportation of criminal foreigners was accepted by a majority of 53%. The minaret ban and the deportation law were therefore added to the Swiss constitution. It's Parliament's task to adjust the laws so that they comply with international law and accords. There are different opinions as to what extent this is feasible, depending on people's political views. How well does Swiss democracy really work? Considering the many possibilities for political participation in this country, could there possibly be a more democratic system? At the beginning of 2011, political scientists at Zurich University, as well as at the Social Science Research Center in Berlin in Germany, developed a democracy barometer for 30 countries. Surprisingly, Switzerland only ranked 14th. The study is controversial, but highlights other criteria that define a democracy besides active participation in the political process. In Switzerland it sees shortcomings, for instance, in the lack of a constitutional court, in party financing, which is not transparent, and in the weak participation in public votes and elections. On average, only two out of five people eligible actually cast their votes. Despite some deficiencies, Switzerland's direct democracy is unique. Switzerland is the only system where direct democracy plays such an important role role in decision-making at the national level are when the votes on, uh, on, on issues determine the political ag agenda to a great degree. It makes decision-making slightly less predictable because at the end it's the people that are going to decide and not just the elites. Together with neutrality and federalism, 
Direct democracy makes part of the Swiss national identity. Not least, this unique political system helps unite the various languages, religions and cultures in Switzerland.